other one to the north. You uh, put your seatbelts on, make sure your airbags work because this has been a, a hell of a year. Now, this coming New Year's, they're gonna kind of break, you know, when the ball is dropped in New York or wherever around the world, with the countdown, we're gonna pray that it's a, a better year. It's not gonna be a better year. Most High is going to really turn it up. This year was a, a year to turn up. Most High is really going to turn things up. It's because it's not going to go back backwards. Things are going to get worse. Anyway, I didn't set up nothing. I don't have any precepts. I'm just going by the Spirit. I want to see where the Spirit leads me. Uh, anyway, um, I wanted to go into uh, this one video, but but I'm clicked on this video, which is moments, which I subscribe to them, as you can see. It says, in the face of endless pressure from the United, I'm not going to read, read more, just happened, U.S. EU breakup, countdown, EU takes action against the U.S. with sanctions. I don't want to do. Nah, I don't got to do. Sanctions. What? What is? What is a sanction? You have sanctions. It's similar to. Similar to similar. What words that come to mind is uh, embargo, terrorist. Terrorist is a uh, a tax. You heavily tax somebody. You know, some country makes a a product, has to ship it, you know, export it to the U.S. or any anywhere else. But politically, they're not on the same page. So let's say X Y Z country wants to import goods to uh, the U.S. The U.S. doesn't don't like their policies. And so what they do is they'll set up sanctions um, against them where they don't accept their, their product, period, or they, they uh, you know, hit them with a tariff, which is a heavy tax. Like if you want to bring it over there, it's going to cost you this much in taxes. And if they say, well, we believe in our product, we'll pay the tax, but we're going to raise the price and so who who gets who gets hit the Americans that buy the product that's why the product is, is, is that much higher so it affects the average American the government don't give a shit about the people they use the people so when you go into this video I didn't even watch it but I already know what they're going to say before they say it let me read this again just happened US EU Break up countdown. EU takes action against the US with sanctions. You know what I'm gonna do? Let me do this.
Okay, this came to my mind. I mean, I did, my eyes caught this. Russia is amassing a shadow fleet of tankers to avoid EU oil sanctions. Sanctions. A threatened penalty for disobeying a law or rule. It, you know, one country is against the policies of another country, so they hit him with sanct uh, sanctions. Official permission of approval, approval of an act, given official permission of approval for uh, an action. What is, what is sanctions in simple words? A strong action taken in order to make people obey a law or a rule or a punishment given when they do not obey. So like I said, the U.S. with the beginning, the going back to the start of this war in February, Russia declaring war. The, really, the war goes back, from, back to 2014. We're just hearing about it now. So it became official. Uh, what the U.S. immediately did was uh, de declare sanctions um, on Russia, and at the same time, the uh, the EU nations, NATO nations, they were with the U.S. because the, the the head of the of NATO or the beast is Amer is the United States. I mean, it's not official. There's no real official head, but they're they're the de facto head. Let's, say, let's just say that. So the U.S., in order to punish Russia, was to declare sanctions. They don't buy gas from them. And now you, you, uh, Europe, the European Union, or NATO nations, which is the same as the European Union, um, it's, it's just part of the same beast, the same beast system. They're, they're, they're suffering. And I believe the winter comes in earlier. They're going through winter right now. Our winter really comes in really January, mid-January to February. The hard, the hard month is February. You got like the uh, two weeks in the January, mid-January to the whole month of February and like two weeks into March. So we're talking about two months of... Uh, you know, winter conditions. So they're suffering it. They're beginning to suffer it right now in Europe. So it's causing more to, you know, heat your homes. So it's like, they're looking at the US like, you know, what the F, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, you know, 50% of us or 40% of us are gonna die so we can, you know, follow follow your lead. No, nah, that, that shit ain't happening. We ain't going to die for y'all. And then ultimately, what's going to come to pass is Revelation 17, verse 12, one down. They shall hate the whore, and they shall, they shall eat her flesh with fire. I'm, I'm merging uh, James 5 and Revelation 17. Matter of fact, let me just go to it. I wanted to go, you know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. Let me go to Revelation. Revelation 17. And I'm going to say something on the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation was written in what year? Approximately, because experts say, well, 90 AD or 100 AD or 95. Scholars argue that. So let's say about 90, 95, 100 AD. That's when um, John received those uh, visions that he wrote down, he scribed. Uh, for the for the church 
for the seven churches of Asia Minor, which were Israelites that believed in the Messiah that came up under the uh, the apostles of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh by Shemal Shai. So they 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 were they were to receive these major prophecies, which that was the end of the book. So John saw these visions and he wrote them down, which the same vision that Daniel saw, that Isaiah saw, that Jeremiah saw, that Zeke, all these prophecies in the, uh, uh, prophets in the past, they saw the same thing. That that's, there, There's all these different prophecies that they saw and they wrote about. It's the same prophecy just given to different prophets in different ways. It's the same. It's like a, it's like a broken record. You know, keep skipping, keep skipping. But it, but it, but the prophecies that they saw, or the dream, dream that they had, or the visions that they had, were different. Like Isaiah saw the uh, mushroom cloud, which he called the heavens being rolled together as a scroll. John saw the same thing in Revelation six. John on the Isle of Patmos saw an actual beast, scarlet colored beast. Daniel saw the same thing. The most I didn't give didn't give Dan um John the Babylonian Empire, the media person. We got it. I always speak, speak on that because that's a major prophecy. This is how we know that the scriptures are accurate, because that goes hand in hand with secular history. And all the so-called Christian scholars, they all say the same thing. If you go to Daniel 7, they all say the same thing. Or, da or Daniel's second chapter. The, first, the head of gold is Babylon. After that is the uh, breasts and the arms of uh, silver, Persian and Medes. They tell you that. Then when you go into their history, you see that they ens and, um, enslaved the, uh, the Israelites. You got these clowns saying that Israel never existed. Well, if that's the case, then we're living in the matrix. We're living in a, 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 a computer um, what's, what's the term? Uh, uh, um, what is it? Uh, graphic computer graphics, CGI computer graphic imaging. Oh, we're living in the matrix. We're in a computer program. This is not real. That's why so many people are leaving com comedic and the comedic way and this and churches and churches are leaving this the church church people are leaving the church left and right because you know what they're finding out that they 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 go to the church and they don't learn anything they don't know anything about prophecies this guy warnock he's a new senator in georgia and he's a, a pastor right he doesn't know anything about the motb he doesn't know anything about babylon the great is america he he's he's part of this world man and when, and he's going to be a, a he's going to be one of the guys that's going to push the MOTB, and I keep saying that. And Captain Tazariak, if you're watching this video, you better get with the program, man. Because if you don't, your Howard by Shem Howard is going to put you to death. Your leader, General Yohanna, he's already done. There's a missile. They, there's a missile for him. <laughs> but you you got a chance to get out of that that um that cult that you're in. That the truth is not there. Home with the truth. The, you have some truth, but the whole truth, no. There's a major prophecy that you're going off on. Okay, so let me go to this. The victory of the Lamb. He's getting ready to come, but before he comes, a major prophecy has to take place before the destruct, deliverance and the destruction comes, and that's the MOTB. And we here at GMS Great Millstone, we put we push it all the daggone time to add nauseam. And Sakari pushes it too. Uh, but you other groups, you don't really push it. HODC knows about it, but they don't push it. They're they're weak. That's a weak camp. It says um they should ask the most how to give them that spirit. Um and um you got 
Bishop Nate, he's he's on a media tour because the small hats control. Trust me, them Jake's ain't just gonna put this guy on the on um on this show. Um, knowing what they knowing what the small hats did, knowing that you letting a known, I'll say anti semp on your show. Why why wasn't J Jason Whist Whitlock called the task? Why do you got an anti semp on your show? Because the anti semp the semps the um the semitics they they the one that gave you the memo. All these established YouTube uh pages that are like actual TV stations that you can catch this show at a certain time every week. It, that's this the YouTube is not a, nothing but an extension of what you see on on the on the television. So Jason Whitlock is set up. He's getting paid for that. He's getting paid handsomely for that. But he gets the memo. The, the people, but the people behind them, which are for the most part small hats, they give him the memo. Put him on, put him on, put him on, so we can hear what he got to say, so we can figure out how to instead of them coming up saying, Well, we want to sit down and have a discussion with you. I'm talking about the small hats at ADL. They're not, you notice they're not doing that. They're not doing that. And four, they said it was 4,000 men. It will look like more than 1,000. That's a threat. That's, a, that's, that's, that's an actual threat. They were marching. They were all men. There were no kids. There were no women pushing carriages. There were no women. They were all men. And for, and for some reason, you got Ephraimites and the Latin tribes. The only faces I saw was... Uh, so-called dark-skinned jakes, not even light-skinned jakes. So is that by design? You got to ask, you got to ask the bishop. So we don't know if he's part of this thing. We don't know, you know, we don't know if he's a Judas goat. We don't know what's really going on behind the scenes. But all of a sudden, everybody's calling this guy up. What, could you be on my show? Could you? Be? And they're all jake. And they're not afraid to be being called an anti-sep. Something's going on, man. Oh, Ronald Dalton Jr. He's not. He's not even in the news no more. The whole controversy controversy is all over that video that he made, and he's not. And and oh, and you can still rent the video. You can still you can buy the video on Amazon. Not a peep out of Jeff Bezos. They didn't call Bezos to task. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. You know, put you know, put the fire on a Shaquille O'Neal for for showing in, in his theater. Something's going on behind the scenes. Anyway, let's read this. I don't know why I saw it at 12. Oh, yeah, this is why I started at 12. Right here it says, and the beast, and by the way, the MOTB, you know what the B stands for? Beast, right? You had General Johannes said, that um, Solomon had the mark, the MOTB. K, the, uh, uh, P Apostle Paul had the MOTB, showing you that he either he's set up to do that and he knows, or he just doesn't know. He's just clueless. Um, when you listen to um, uh, Captain Tazariak when he was had the little discussion, the discussion with um, his son Campbell. And Hassan Campbell mentioned the um, the MOTB, and he mentioned it, you know, em emphatically. He said, "Look, that's what it is." He didn't say. He didn't say, "What's your thought of that?" He said, "That's what it is." He said, "They're gonna, they're gonna karagma us, and they're gonna throw us in, uh, you know, camps." And um, like I said in, in one of the previous videos, that it it looked like uh, Captain Zari got. Captain Desaria got hit with a gut shot. Now I explained a gut shot. And he explained it always oh, in your mind. And this, you know, the white man put the thought. So I said in that video that I did, I said, well, that means Adam and Eve had the mark. Look, the mark is not going to come about until the beast is established. And it's talking about now. He he has yet to karagma everybody. And when you go to the book of Revelation, where it speaks about the M, that's the only place it speaks about straight up. The MOTB is in the book of Revelation, which happened, which took place. John saw those visions. 
somewhere between 90 and 100, uh, give or take a couple of years, A.D. We're talking like 30 years or more from the time of uh, the, uh, see, the Roman siege on uh, Jerusalem. So when he, so anything that John says is concerning things that shall come to pass. That shall, the scriptures, the revelation says that shall shortly come to pass. Future. Anything that John saw, it was talking about. Now he goes back in Revelation 12. He speaks about the child being born. He's talking about Yahweh Shai, but he's bringing it up to date to what's going to happen to Israel that they're going to go into a wilderness. So sometimes he'll, he'll, he'll go back into time and then he'll come back into the present and then he'll go into the future. So, so the, the, the prophecies, which means to say before, future events that John saw and wrote down and really didn't understand are for to, has it come even in his lifetime um, or a hundred years later or 500 years later, with, now we're talking about going into the 500 AD, 600 AD, 400 AD. We're talking about the, uh, um, we're, we're, we're talking about, like I said, future events. That was during the, the medieval time. Look up medieval, look up <clears throat> dark ages. And Esau tells you, go to Google, It'll tell you it was something, nothing, nothing was really happening back then. Yeah, nothing was really happening with you. You, you didn't have any power. Jake's had the power. You were on the bottom. That's the fulfillment of uh, Revelation chapter 20, one of my favorite uh, uh, scriptures or prophecies. When he spoke about the beast coming out in Revelation uh, uh, 20, you got, you got to go into this history of... Uh, when did they first come up, come out and take the world? Well, you, a key figure is Christopher Columbus, Christopher Colon, which which he's a small hat, according to documents that we read. His actual name was Christopher Colon, and he was a, a crypto Jew. And he had to accept Christianity in the form of Catholicism. You have to talk about Queen Isabel and Queen and uh, Queen Isabel and uh, King. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, Torquemada, the Inquisition. And that's what John saw, but he saw Christopher Columbus. No, he saw them coming to the Americas. He saw them taking down the Northern Kingdom, which is a fulfillment of many scriptures. We're out the same to the Most High. So everything that John wrote were prophecies that's going to happen maybe a month after, a year after, 10 years after, 500 years after, 2,000 years after. What he saw was he saw things that happened all the way up until this point. So the part where he saw Revelation 13 and 16, there, it, it didn't take place any time in history. Paul Kersey said, well, maybe it already took place. You got a major prophecy but it happens and nobody knows about it. It's a major prophecy and nobody knows about it. It just took place and it's gone. We're back to square one, so to speak. We know through the spirit because we believe that we're the prophets. We know that through the spirit that that's clearly talking about. And we were talking about this before that, before, you know, like if you go to Sweden, different parts of the world, they're actually doing it now. They're actually doing it now. So we said it back then. We said it 10, when we got on YouTube. Before we got on YouTube, we were talking about that. I sounded like a broken record that, like, like that because these are the times of the prophecy. I go into a lot of prophetic um, books. I go through the, the books over and over again. So when it happens, you can't say, well, nobody, if I knew, you can't say that. If you watch our videos, you, you heard it. Look, 
Bishop Nathaniel watches our videos. He said that. He said, I watch all of your videos. He said that on the phone call that I had, he ran into uh, Apostle Ricard somewhere in the city. And um, and um, Bishop Nathaniel said, call to her, call to her. I called to her. I was talking. I didn't want to talk. You know, I said, you know, he said, what am I doing wrong? I already teach the Canadians. This is an Israelite. And I, and I was going to say something else. And he's like, what am I? I said, man, look, do me a favor. Give, put the phone back. I want to talk to you, motherfucker. You know? But, I, but that's when he said it. He, told, he said, look, I watch all of your videos. So to this very day, he watches our videos. And if his eyes are open, he sees what we see. He sees the MOTB. Now, now, either one or two things are happening. Either he doesn't see it, which means the most high, close your eyes, or you see it, but somebody in, behind the scenes are telling you, yeah, yeah, we know what it is, but you got to teach the congregation that it's not what GMS says it is. And that goes for, uh, that goes for um, the ISUPK or any other group, major group. I could, man, that gut shot, brother. When this, when this, when um, Hassan Campbell mentioned the MOTB, that messed up, that messed up uh, Captain Cesare X day, which leads me, which other men, the GMS is saying that he, that he took the bag, that he's, that he was told not to go into it. That like, it almost like he knows it. So he has to kind of pull out the script in his mind that General Yohannik gave him. Remember, Remember, you can't turn it back. I got the videos. I have the receipts of you actually saying it. When, when the, the Maxine came out, you said, go ahead and take it. And you said it a couple of times. And what's, hap what's coming out now? They're saying, what people have, there's a movie out. A die sud. <laughs> die sud. If you don't know what the, what the movie, what does he mean by die, sir? If you don't know what I mean by that, then you ain't meant to know it. Uh, but ultimately, before this takes pl this place, and it's happening now, it says, uh, let me see. And the 10 horns, which now there are more than 10. There's 30 of them, but there's a, there's a, it's, it's based upon 10. The 10 horns, which thou sawest upon the, the beast, what's the beast? And the beast did not come out, come about. The, f the full fulfillment of the beast goes back to the Roman Empire. Deadly wound was healed, and the beast is here again, starting with the infancy of the beast. It goes back to Christopher Columbus goes back to the Renaissance period. That's why they had to change the images. They had to do a thing called iconoclasm. Which this, we ran into this guy, he was a, he was an expert on icons and the Renaissance period and that art. And we asked him a question. I said, oh, no, it was Pazza Gabar that asked him, he said, what is what is the term iconoclasm? He said, "You tell me." And then I and then I said, um, "I said, um, I said, what was the Renaissance all about?" And he didn't say nothing. I said, "Yeah, it was about destroying black images and putting up white images." And the dude, you know, he could have he could have he could have been in the Olympics, man. <laughs> he could have he could have he could have ran a hundred and beat uh, um, Hussein Bolt the way he got out of there with his girl. When I said, I said, what is the Renaissance all about? In plain English, he, he stopped. He didn't say nothing. I said, I'm going to tell you what it's about. It's about the, dest the destruction of black images on the walls in the form of icons, which is, which is called iconoclism. Clism means the destruction of, basically. Um, like you have a catechism. A catechism is what? Cate cata is short for... Uh, Catalytic or cat, uh, cat, cat meaning um, universal. That's where you get the word Catholic from. Roman Catholic Church, Roman 
Catholic, meaning worldwide, in all many sense, church. So, 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 uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 cate cataclysm means to destroy. It means to destroy. In a world sense, and to destroy an image, right? Something in your mind in the form of actual images. So iconoclasm is what? The destruction, the world destruction of images. Your computer, you have you click, you you have symbols there, which are called icons. They're symbols. You 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 can look at the symbol of Google and see that the symbol for Google is different from the symbol for uh, Microsoft or uh, any other any other uh, symbol that you go to or, or icon. So it says, uh, and the ten horns which which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. You know who the whore is, right? And th and one is and and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh with fire and burn her with fire. What did John saw see? What did he see? He saw the, the 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 missiles hitting this place, and he saw where it was coming from. He saw he saw it was coming from Russia, it was coming from um, Eastern Europe, and it was coming from uh, Western Europe. So what he saw was these horns, which were a part of the hua, which the hua sat on the horns. You know, basically, you know, knock, knock, knock the whore off, off the beast, and then shot missiles on it, shot fire on it. That's what he saw. This is getting ready. He saw that two thousand years ago. This is getting ready to happen now. So, so now let's bring it, bring it back to the, the beast system and the MOTB. What did he see concerning the MOTB? And when did he, when when did that take place? It's taking place now, two thousand years later. It's taking place now, so it's impossible for Solomon to have the MOTB. There was not there was no con concept of a beast. The only time was spoken. The first time the beast system was spoken about was in the time of, during the time of uh, uh, Daniel, during the time of the Babylonian captivity. So what in the hell is Yo General Yohanna talking about? When you say something like that, something so irresponsible, you know, downright stupid, when you say, oh, King Solomon had the MOTB, you know what I wanted to say? Uh, the Apostle Paul had the MOTB. That doesn't make any sense at all. Like I said, these, most of these Israelites that come, go to these different organizations, these different Israelite groups are zombies, are zombies. What they do is they go to class, they take, they, they open up their notebooks or whatever, record it, whatever they do. And what they do is they become masses at regurgitating what they heard. That's why when they, when they say, who's the king Christ? I'm going to question that. Especially me seeing other videos and everybody saying Yahweh Shai. Look, Sakari, they say Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, GMS. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, even other groups. So let me do this. Let me, I, I said all that to go into this. Now I started off with the sanctions, right? The EU sanctions. So the EU, they having meetings among themselves. They're like, you know, they're in the midst of getting ready to knock the, the, the whore off the beast, off of their backs. And then what they're going to do after that, they're going to shoot fire on the whore, right? So now let's go over here. I'm going to get ready to close it. And let me do this.
Okay, let me come on down. This is the video I just featured in the beginning. It's happening. U.S. is about to go bankrupt. Well, this is another video. And 31.4 trillion in debt can no longer be paid. Oh, well, they can't pay that debt. That's why they have to just completely destroy the dollar. And it's going to lead into uh, the digital dollar, which is the CBDC, Central Bank, Central uh, Central Bank, was a C, uh, CB Central Bank, DC digital currency. Okay, uh, where is it? Okay, this is what I open up with. Uh, deep in moments uploaded uh, just happened. U.S. EU breakup countdown. EU takes action against the U.S. with sanctions. So they want to break off from the U.S. Uh, okay, I'm trying to find Mike of Rethink the Dollar. So I get so many, here we go, I get so many notifications. Bear me for a minute. Okay, this is the, this is the, let me bring it up. Uh, right here. Okay, right over here. This is what I want. This is um, RT, RTD TV, Rethink the Dollar. Uh, the show was put up last night. Uh, Nigeria, Nigeria, West Africa limits cash withdrawals to force CBDC usage, the people's talk show. So this is five minutes and 43 seconds in. From Bloomberg, technology, Nigeria caps ATM cash withdrawals at $45 daily. That's nothing to push digital payments. Digital payments are what? CBDC, world currency. What's going to come after that? This is what they're putting in place first before the major prophecy comes in the past. This is part of the prophecy. That's why it says buy or sell. If you can't get it, you sold out or you're just a fucking idiot. Central Bank asks residents to use e nari, meaning uh, electric Nari, meaning Nigerian money, elect instead of paper Nari, they're going to use e Nari. And other channels, nation seeks to drive financial inclusion to include what? The CBDC and curb corrupt corruption because they're saying, you know, there's a lot of things going on, you know, corruption going on with the money system. See, if we can set up a a, uh, a, a Inari or a, uh, a uh, what is it, uh, C, uh, a CBDC, everything is tracked. That's slavery. That's slavery. Everything that you buy, you buy a Snicker, a Snicker bar, is tracked. They know it's on, they, oh, he brought a Snicker bar, 5.30, he came from work, he got on the um, tube or the subway or whatever, and you're going to have to use your hand or your forehead or whatever, a digital wallet, which is going to be put in you to, to get on the train. So they know that you got to, you left the job at five, five o'clock. You went to the train station at five ten. You got off at five forty five. You went to such and such grocery store. You brought you a Snicker bar and a, and a water. And then the price is there. So they, and oh, and then 
whatever they whatever you get in the bank because they're going to do a, a UBI, universal basic income. Let's see how that works. Where well, you get a certain amount of money, I don't know how that's going to work, but um, you're going to get a certain amount of money in 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 um in the whole CBD C CBDC system, but you got to spend it before the month ends. If you don't spend it, if you're trying to save money, it's not going to roll over into the next month. If you don't, if you got two hundred and fifty dollars left at the end of that month, you better go out and shop. You better get rid of that money because then it's going to go away and it's going to start again. Whether they give you two thousand a month or whatever the case may be, this is what they're doing to these immigrants coming in the country. They're getting free free money. Somebody said they're getting each and every one of them is getting seven thousand dollars a month. That's that, that's they're making more than you, and they're not even working. So it says, and this was put up December six. 2020 at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Nigeria's central bank slash the daily withdrawal limit from automatic tailor machines, ATMs, in a bid to boost digital payments in Africa, Africa's most populous nation. Wait a minute most populous nation, that means the biggest population in, in uh, Africa um, is West Africa, namely Nigeria. Why is that? Because fulfillment, uh, stars of heaven as the sands of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. So they want to start with the biggest, this is, this is a, <clears throat> this is like a trial run. This is happening in China and it's based upon uh, credit system and uh, 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 social social uh, credit system. They show you that in uh, the series, um, The Black Mirror, watch, the, watch this episode, just go in Black Mirror, the airport scene. And that's exactly what they plan on doing. They did, did that, with, if you work for any of the app companies, Uber, you have a, 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 um, a social uh, system, a social credit system. There's certain people that I said, I don't like his attitude, I'm gonna give him a two. And they could give me a two. I, I can be the nicest guy in the world and I might've said something that offended them. And I said, I'm sorry, but they gonna give me a two any goddamn way. So that's what they're doing. That's, this, this is what I call digital captivity, digital slavery. They are getting ready to put everybody into captivity. On a, on a world level, Revelation 3, verse 10. And see, we go through the same thing over and over and over again, which are the prophecies. You got to keep pushing them out there because you know, when this thing hits and people say, well, I didn't know if there was a video on this. A lot of you watch these our videos to get entertained, just straight up, straight up. Like you, you may go to some, you got some newer, newer Israelite camps that not, that's not even a part of One West. They just follow One West and they'll do a video and they'll, in one day, they'll get like 50,000 hits and they don't even know everything. So this is a major stumbling block. Guys are just doing their own thing based on what they learned from uh, GMS and, and other major groups that came out of One, out of one West. They're doing their own thing. Most people, if like I said, if you get like okay, Bishop Nate, Bishop Nathaniel, whatever, when 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 he does a show, check out his other the other videos, the IUIC videos, like different state, they don't get a lot of hits. You know who gets a lot of hits? Bishop Nathaniel. Why? Because he's a cult of personality. That's why he wears that that shiny suit. He's a cult of personality. Uh, let me see. Let me put that up. All right. There was a song by uh, what's the name of the group? Something Color, In Living Color, or whatever. It was a, a um, rock group of Jakes. 
It is a song called Cult of Personality. So let me let me uh let me do this. Cult of personality. That there it is. That's the song. Cult of personality. Live in color. That was the name of the group. Cult of personality. Great, great song. You know, Jake could do a rock and roll song and this and you you bump into it, man. The coat of personality, the coat of personality, the coat of personality. They were rocking, man. <laughs> anyway. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of cult of personality. Adolf Hitler was a cult of personality. Why? He wore the same fatigues of the suit and he had that small mustache. Um, uh, Fidel, Castro, Fidel Castro, he always wore the green fatigues with the hat on, with the beard. That's a cult of personality. Basically, they, they made him into caricatures. Uh, so let's, let's read this. Let me do this. What is the cult of personality? Let's, let's try this. A cult of personality or a cult of the leader is a result of an effort which is made to create an idolized and heroic image of a leader by a government, often through unquestioning flattery and praise. When you watch, now I don't know if IUIC does this by design or they just happen to do it. But when you watch certain videos, go, go to any videos of IUIC, and that can mean for anybody. You'll see, you'll see, uh, you'll see Nate with his arm folded with the shiny suit, and you might see like the newest one. You see his face, and then you see the small hats beside him. That is new. That's his newest video. That's called a cold of personality. Whether he knows it or not, whether he knows that he's doing it or not, whether somebody behind the scenes created a cold of personality. Look, GMS, we just give you the truth. There's, there's no gimmicks. No gimmicks, man. We just give you the straight skinny on the truth. What is an example of a cult of personality? And who follows a cult of personality? Dumb people. People whose the elevator doesn't go to the top floor. People who who would five sandwiches short of a picnic, zombies, people just, just black, don't question. When I, look, when I went to the main school in one West, I used to question everything. I used to get into a lot of arguments and there was a lot of people that didn't like me. But when I came around, they said, oh, here comes the hall. Yeah, what are you going, what are you going to hit us with today? They didn't like thinking. I remember teaching, I remember teaching Gazak's class because he was working and he, there was a point where he just stopped coming, but he was working. And the, and the class got big in, in about a month or so. And I remember brothers, they were, the same group of guys would come in. And I said, next week when you come in, we're going to have a test. Guess what happened? That following week, nine, about, I would say 80% of the people didn't show up because they didn't want to take the test. They didn't, they didn't want to think. They came for the entertainment, man. It says, as, as a sign of consolidation of power as Iraq's dictator Saddam Hussein's personality cult prevailed um, Iraqi society. Right, because he had a certain suit on. He had that, which he was a cult of personality. He had thousands of portraits, posters, statutes, and morals erected in his honor all over Iraq. And that's called a cult of personality. And that fits Bishop Nathaniel, he got the shiny suit on. And like I said, I don't know if he knows that he's created that or people behind, I don't know what the deal is, but, but see, that's why a lot of people flock to these, when they see him marching, that's also part of a code of, code of personality. Like I said, say it again, because I want to be, however I want to be fair. 
I don't know if he's it was taught that there was people behind him, a PR firm was behind him. But when you when you make a cult of personality, you have people flock. Oh, I got to see him. I got to see him. They make him godlike. So if you get any video where it's 50,000 50, views, 30,000 views, uh, what is it? Uh, I, th I believe when he went on Jason Whitlock's show, I think it was, uh, well, it was Paul Kersey that said he got over a million people following him or, or whatever. And I, and I did a video called 125,000 Camps. Because what I did was I said, okay, let's say you got a million people following him. Half of them, let's suppose half of them are women. The other half are men, which is 500,000. Each uh, camp should be about four four men per camp. Um, you cut you cut the five hundred thousand into two hundred fifty thousand. Cut the two hundred fifty thousand one hundred twenty five thousand. So this should so if all those people have followed you, which are men, five hundred thousand, there should be one hundred twenty five thousand camps out there. And I was just playing with the numbers. The majority of those people that make the comments that that. They, you get the big views. They they they're watching you for entertainment purposes. They're entertained by it. They're entertained by it. Cause when cause when they push this karagma out there, a lot of people are gonna take it and they're gonna say, "I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to take it." And um, we're gonna tell them, "Look, we did videos on it. We did we did documentaries on 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 the, on the karagma." But what are they going to say? Well, I, I didn't take it. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't really, you know, I wasn't really paying attention. That's why we constantly put up shows on prophetic events. People are going shopping. They're not even, <laughs> women be shopping. Look, hey, that's why you have all these prep, these prep videos, these different prep videos, the angry prepper, Canadian prepper, uh, them cap. Them cab, whatever his name is, these different prepper, and they're mostly Edomites, a couple of Jakes. Guess what? A lot of those people, a Travis, Travis, he looks just like uh, the twin brother of uh, Vocab Malone. What was his name? Uh, I forget the name of the video, but he comes up too. And he goes and he lives out in the woods. He's always making video out in the woods and he's talking about the shit hit the van scenario. A lot of people watch that just to be entertained. A lot of people watch it just to be entertained. So a lot of people that have, people that have saw our videos on the, on the Karagma, a lot of them are going to wind up taking it any goddamn way because they're not paying attention. Anyway, I think I said enough. I think I went, I didn't want to make this long, but it, it was a little long. So it's on to the next video, giving all praises to you. How about Shamal Shai about Shum? Which is the true names of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, Shalom.